Right, I've already cropped the image so that we can just start straight away, right? I'm gonna go to the exposure module first because that's what I want to change. So now you see the image is much more bright. Now, because this is a very artistic image, or at least in my experience, when I was editing this for the first time for this video, I figured, why not try the colorize module? Because in the colorize module, you can change the hues to any color that you like, and it just completely changes the color, right? And if you increase the saturation, it becomes even stronger. But now it's so light, that I figured why not drop the lightness all the way to here to have a dark blue. And why do I want to have a dark blue? It has to do with the time of day that this image will portray. Okay, now let's increase the source mix as well. But rather than editing the entire image, I'm gonna go over here to draw and mask and I'm gonna use the gradient mask. I'm gonna click here and then everything at the dot will be edited and everything at the point will stay the same, right? So in this case, I need to change it. And this is the effect that I'm going for in this image. Now let's close that one down and go to the next one, which is the RGB primaries module. Now I've used this module before. I think I even did a video about it. If so, you can link it up here or you can check it out here. Now you can push the sliders from one side to another. So red purity, you can desaturate it. You can make it much stronger, change the use of the green. Change the purity of the green. Same with the blues, more into the magentas. Same with the blues and the purity and the tint, right? And the RGB primaries module is essentially a channel mixer, like uh, in the color calibration module, but with a different interface. So even though the sliders are named red, green, and blue, all the adjustments that you made here are global and will affect the overall colorimetry of the image, just like a channel mixer does. But just remember that when you apply it before the filmic RGB module or the sigmoid tone mapping modules, the RGB primaries can be used to make small adjustments to colorimetry, but when you apply them afterwards, so like we're doing right here, it may be used to apply to creative edits that we're doing right now. Now for this image, I'm gonna increase uh, this right here and i'm going to change the hue tint by quite a bit now let's see before let's see an after here we go that gives it more like a dusk i think it's called type of look now i want to use the same mask so i'm just going to go my bad to the drawn mask and then here drawn mask no mask used i'm going to click colorize and it's using the same mask again so that saves us some time okay now then we're going to my most favorite module, which is the color balance RGB one. I'm going to activate it, go to the masks, click here, contrast gray fulcrum, so that we have a nice balanced image when we change this. And in this case, I'm going to increase the vibrance. And you can see what happens if I decrease it and increase it. So I'm going to increase it. Now you can move these sliders or you could just hit the right mouse button and just fill in a value that you think will be suitable. And the same thing goes for the contrast, right? Because this image definitely, definitely needs some contrast. I'm going to increase the saturation as well. And I'm going to show you a before and after. So here's a before, here's an after. That's warming up the image, while at the same time creating the illusion that the sunset is happening at this side of the image, okay? Now what I want to add here for you, right, is that in practice, you should use the chroma setting if you want to preserve the scene linearity of the light emission or keep the luminance on change, right? But these changes might affect some hues more heavily than others due to the fact that the color space is not fully perceptually scaled. Now, saturation is closer to the effect of mixing white paint with some base color. So reducing the saturation of red will degrade it to pink and reducing its chroma will degrade to a gray shade at the same luminance. Now, saturation is perhaps a more intuitive way to interact with color due to its connection with painting, but choosing one or the other is mostly a matter of deciding where on the lightness uh, you want to push your colors and where they are to begin with. So if you want to have pastel colors, you gotta use saturation. If you really want like laser-like colors, uh, more like a monochromatic at the risk of looking synthetic, then chroma is the way to go. I'm gonna close that one and uh, this image definitely needs some contrast. So local contrast, click up here, clarity. 
So that's just a standard value. You can change this if you want to. In other videos, I like to use 180. But for this, I think it's it's too strong for some reason. So let's click Clarity. Let's close this down. And someone told me that the developers rather not have you use this. I don't know why, but I'm just showing you the power of dark table, right? Now I want to remove some of the haze, uh, which is uh, evident in this image. There we go, which brings a lot of details back in the brighter areas. And now overall, I still believe that the image is a bit dull, but I'm gonna create a new instance of the exposure. And in this case, I'm gonna increase the exposure by quite a bit. And you can do that by using this slider or by just dragging it out here. I'm not gonna mess around with the black level correction, but I am gonna use the mask again that we've used at the RGB primaries in Colorize, right? So let's close this one down. Let's click a before, after, and then let's take a snapshot. So we've got our snapshot right here and our original down here or the crop one actually. So here's your original image and then here's the image that we've ended up with. 